Hello all, Michael Roach here. Welcome to Season 6, the final season of my FM19 Southampton save. That's right, no matter what happens this year, this will be the end of our Southampton adventure. It's been pretty eventful so far, let's hope for a really good year. It's been a very busy summer transfer window and I am actually bloody excited because I have bought in some absolute belters and I know I have. Let's meet the newbies. But before that, we will do the outs, and we start with Kieran Tierney. Ex-captain has now gone to Tottenham, annoyingly, for £40 million. We only had him valued at £17 million, so to sell him for 40 is pretty good. It hurt a little bit. In our time together, he played 137 games for Southampton. He was the first signing I think I made. Uh, 137 appearances, four goals in that time. He was a quality player for us, despite not being having his best year last year. Uh, still a four-star rated player, and he will be missed. Don't worry, I've replaced him. It's fine. Next up is Johnny, another fullback. He has gone to Zhang Fu out in China. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce the first bit of that ho ho wax here. Um, but yeah, a very decent footballer. Had a good time for us, but you can tell here from the scout summary. 48 rated. He wasn't exactly good enough to really be our first choice right back. And I feel defence last year is where we really got let down. Going forward, we're still very decent. But at the back... Just not quite good enough. We have rectified that. And Johnny, unfortunately, was probably part of the problem. Uh, made 72 appearances for us and scored as many goals as Kieran Tierney did. It was short but sweet for James Madison. He has gone to Wolves for £11 million. Again, only 46 rated on our scout report. Uh, not the best player I signed. I will happily admit it. Only played nine games for us last year. Didn't even score. So he won't really be missed. Ah, another one of the original newbies. Uh, Ibrahim Kanate has gone to Leicester. Sold him for, I think it was £11 million again. Physically still brilliant, mentally alright, not great, and technically not brilliant. He never really developed into the kind of player I was hoping he would be, but still 126 appearances for us. He has been a good, good servant to the club. He will be missed. I enjoyed Kanate. And it's all change at the back, and we're all, I think, safe to say, we're happy to see the back of Matthias Ginter. He went for only £8 million to Newcastle. Uh, played 94 games for us, only six short of the century. I, I say we're both glad to see the back of him. He was a decent servant to the club, but just not good enough. It's, it's the simple answer, just not the required standard. Other notable absences that Pierre-Emil Hoiberg has gone. Uh, he was on a part exchange, but I'll get to that deal in a minute. And also we lost Jan Valery, uh, the young right back. But I'm not too worried about that. Rosas has kind of deputised nicely into that right back role. He's not going to be our first team right back. You'll see that in a minute. But there was no real room for Valery and we needed all the money we can get. So I've spent a lot. A lot. <laughs> Let's meet them. I'm excited. We will start with the cheapest, uh, Zoran Koznia, a 19-year-old Serbian keeper. He may be our number one for this year. I haven't quite decided. I think Patricio is still going to be number one. I'm going to give him one more year to impress me. Uh, he's not obviously brilliant at the moment in terms of like his training is going down, which is a bit disappointing. But for 19 years old and have these stats, he's also described as a wonder kid. So hopefully he'll develop well this season. Maybe by the end of the season he will be our number one. Who knows? £1.5 million. Pounds. Snip. Another kind of like backup option that I signed in is a young player called Claudio Gomez, 24-year-old French, uh, can play anywhere in the middle of the park, mainly as a deep line playmaker in the defensive midfielder role. Roch is still here, so between the two of them, I think they can make a nice little kind of rotation pairing. Uh, only bought for £2.5 million pounds as well for Man City, so let's face it, that's pretty good value. Uh, now this is where we get into the big bucks. Welcome, Christopher Adger. Uh, he is, yes, he is the Ginter that we just did not have. 25-year-old uh, Norwegian, bought him in for £30 million. Look at the yellow. Look at it. It's glorious. More importantly, leadership, 16. Determination, 16. Composure, 15. Just, yes, ball-playing defender. He is the perfect foil uh, or the perfect replacement for Ginter. Very good physically as well. Good strength, good natural fitness, good jumping. Decent pace on the defender at 11 and 12. Could not be happier. Literally, I've been scouting him for ages. Um, Madrid finally let us have him. Described as a powerful centre back. Understatement. He is going to. Him and Bichi Conti are going to smash this. Although he may have competition. Because welcome, Reese Oxford. This is the boy who I actually agreed to sign before the season even started. That £48 million pounds that I had uh, before our new transfer budget was given, the majority of it has gone on Reese. Spent £30 million pounds on him. So we have two new £30 million pound centre backs, which means playing three at the back now. Is going to be great. We're going to have Oxford, Bitchy Conti, and um, and Adger. It's going to be amazing. I love it. Uh, obviously, Rick Oxford, you'll know from the West Ham save, getting hammered. If not, go and watch the series. It's great. Um, shameless plug. <laughs> it's uh, it's just brilliant. Young English as well, which obviously helps with the registration rules. Still potential through the roof. He's only 24 years old. Can still reach four star potential ability. Already at three and a half. Buzzing. Very excited. Ah, now. 
This is a time to get excited. Hello, Albie McLean. Hello, Yellow. Look at this. The guy is like a physical god. He's like a Greek god. I absolutely love him. Um, Albie? I might end up calling him Albie. I don't know why I've said it like that. Four star already. Could be four and a half star. He's beyond Wonder Kid. He's, already, he's called a decisive fullback. He is so much better than that. I actually think he's better than Kieran Tierney. £38 million. And Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, we paid Leicester for this boy. So if he doesn't uh, achieve it, I'm going to be very, very unhappy. But I think, you know, he's going to be great. 18 determination. 18 decisions. 18 bravery. 16 positioning. Just the, the, the physicals. off. Oh, I'm excited. And yes, in that way. I said we needed an upgrade on fullbacks. Would you ever have imagined Danny Carvajal playing in a Southampton shirt? He is here. Uh, £38 million pounds for Danny Carvajal I spent as well. I told you I got a bit mad. He, they're not even the biggest signings, trust me. Um, this, this is uh, unbelievable. He's obviously won everything. Experienced fullback. 243 appearances for Real Madrid. God knows how many trophies in that time. You can look at the career milestones here. Just, just look at this. Look how much stuff he's won. But as we know, he's going to be a brilliant, brilliant addition. I'm very much looking forward to having him in the team. Glad we got him at 31 years old. He will start to deteriorate probably maybe this season. If not, it will definitely be next year. But for one season and one season alone, 240 grand a week, it's well worth paying. Excited. There's only one more transfer, but it was worth £75 million. So he better be worth it. And it's not a defender. It's an attacking option and one that may just bring the title back to St. Mary's. It's only Jaden Sancho. Look at this. Look at this. An elite winger. We've never had an elite player before. Look at this. 17 acceleration, 19 agility. The rest of the physicals are decent. 16 vision, 17 flair, 17 dribbling, 16 first touch, 16 technique. Inverted winger can play either wing, can even play up front. 14 pros, 2 cons. The guy is just... Yes. Yes. We, we needed a proper elite left winger. We have signed one. I am so excited to see him. And we are going to see him today in our first game in the Premier League, which is where I will kick it off in a second. So there's your rundown now. We didn't bring in as much money as I thought we had. We only brought in £95 million from all the sales that we made. But just look at the oh, the outlay of £221 million is nuts. And look at what's done to the finances. In the red doesn't quite do it justice. £56 million in the red. Oh dear. Dear, dear, dear me. But we actually start off, for a change, not with a top six opponent. We actually get to kick off the season away at Swansea, who we owe, to be fair, because we beat them at the Liberty last year, but I still remember them managing to beat us at St. Mary's, and I've still not forgiven them for it. So we're going to get the revenge on camera today. And if you actually look at the start to our season, it's not that bad. On paper, we've got Middlesbrough, Stoke, Huddersfield, Watford, Leicester, Newcastle. We don't play a top six rival until the 30th of September, which is Manchester United away. After that, it gets a little bit trickier. But at least they're nicely spaced out. Uh, and it's going to give us a nice run to get some momentum up before we start playing the big boys. This year, I think we'll do better against the big boys because we've got better players, uh, more experienced players, better mental players with a little bit more about them. Uh, and I, honestly, I cannot wait. I'm so excited to try this team out. You have no idea. So the team looks like this for today. We're going to have Patricio in goal. Then you've got McLean making his debut at left back with Pichy Conti. Adjo also making his debut, as is Carvajal. Uh, that back four now, all three and a half star. And the three and a half star now for us, I think, means leading Premier League player. So four stars like nearly world class, which is what Jaden Sancho is. I'm off. Oh, um, got Gundogan partnering Beltran in the middle. If there is one area I feel we are slightly missing... I do feel it is maybe in the centre of the park where we maybe need a better standard of player. Um, that might be the only place we fall short, but I've got no more money to spend until January unless I make some severe... Actually, no, we haven't got any more money to spend in January. So hopefully we'll make it to January uh, and we'll be in a good position. And then maybe if I can generate me enough more funds, I might be able to get in at one more world-class midfielder just to push us to that bit. I went after Barela, couldn't get him. It was really irritating. Arsenal awesome. managed to nick him and I was pissed off. Jane Sancho, uh, Moroni and Bungard are all in behind Brill, Donald Abella, who still maintains my starting striker. Well, I think Goobles may challenge him this year. And then on the bench, we've got Alex Fernando. Uh, I was going to bring Kazina on for uh, Henderson, actually. Uh, then Gomez, Barkley, Resorts for Patrick Cotrona and Goobles. The bench now looks severely stronger as well. We look like such a better, more equipped unit than we did last year. I cannot tell you how happy I am with the signings. I haven't even seen them play yet, and I'm already excited. And I'm already just happy because we just need I just needed a bigger budget and that would sort it out. Player to really watch out for is Matt O'Reilly's very decent. They've got wait what? They've got Gareth Bale. 
For free? If I then Gareth Bale was for free, I would have brought him back in. That's a bit of a muck up on my part. So, okay, yeah, we've got to watch out for Bale, Matt O'Reilly. This boy here, Lorty, looks like a very decent footballer. He's scored in a couple of the games he's, uh, I've seen from him, and he looks like a very solid uh, unit. Not one that I'd probably have in our team. I'd still rather have Belcher and Gundogan, but he looks like a decent footballer. I'm a bit upset Robert won't be playing today. He is injured and the only absentee. Other than that, we do have a fully fit squad. So this may well be the starting eleven that I stick with for the majority of the season. Uh, I like the fact now that I can genuinely switch up between this and the 5-2-1-2 and know that defensively we've got brilliant, brilliant options as Jaden Sancho gets his first touch in the Southampton shirt and scores within the first 25 seconds of his debut. Oh my God. Lovely play here by Moroni. Just took the ball forward. Play a little square ball to Jaden. No, they're, they're silly to show him onto his right foot and he's just bent one into the far corner. What a start to your debut, mate. 25 seconds into the new season, we are 1-0 up. Boom! Ready, Danny Carvajal. Look at this. That touch was magic. Into Bungard. I'm mean, going to light Carvajal and Bungard down that right-hand side. I think it's insanely strong. But so is our bloody left-hand side now. We've got two four-star players there. Beltran just hits it wide. Oh, this could be good. I am excited. I do feel, actually, this year that there is a chance of a Champions League run. If we can keep this first team fit, I do feel... Like, we've got some just some really, really good options. Uh, and it's all about being more defensively solid. This year is, is what I want. I want to see more clean sheets. I don't want to see us throwing away games in the last 10 minutes or so. No more of that. Moroni whips the ball in. Jane Sancho doesn't get to it. Bungard on the ball. Smashes it in. It's his first goal of the season. Expecting big things from him this year. He was in excellent form towards the end of last year. And we missed him in the final stages of the season. I'm expecting at least maybe um, if, I could, if he could get 12, 15 goals from midfield, I think that would be excellent. And that is one hell of a finish and it's not a bad start. Get 12 or 15 goals for him and Sancho. Add that to the 20 that Brill usually get. You know, we're already in business. It's about the back. It's about keeping the clean sheets, keeping it tight, seeing games out like we didn't last year. It's like every time we score United, I have to go one better. Well, it starts to the season go. That's pretty good, actually. We scored after one minute, and now it's 2-0 half time away at Swansea. It's not the... It's it's still every away game in the Premier League is a hard game. You know, there are no easy games in the Premier League. I know it's a cliche, but it's true. There are no easy games. Um, so we've just got to make sure that we stay professional all the way through the season. Gareth Bale hasn't had a chance against Albin McLean yet. He's absolutely roasted him all day. Moroni over the corner, whips it in. Briel at the back post, doesn't get there, doesn't matter. Jaden Sancho's got his second. And just as we score a third, United get a fourth. Bugger off. Lovely header over there from Briel. Bang. Love it. Well done, Jaden. Great header. He's not the tallest guy in the world either, so it's good that he's managed to leap up there like a salmon and just tap it in. O'Reilly here, driving at our defence, plays it square to Lorty, who finds Ayu down on the left-hand side. It's a nice run by Ayu here, he's giving him a little bit too much room. Good tackle from Carval, but falls to O'Reilly, back to Ayu. Pressing nicely, Dummett's going to get the chance to whip the ball in, he has Lorty. Oh, we just can't... Clean sheets, boys. I'm really annoyed here, we just fall asleep a little bit at the back and it's, it's some finish to be fair he literally just tapped that with his left foot it's a magical finish please don't make a comeback let's not start the, let's not do this let's not start the season like this come on it's not been Briel's day this today so I'm going to bring on Willem Goobles and he's going to go and stay up front for a bit and I'm thinking I might rest up Gonzalo Moroni as well and bring on Super Ross Super Super Ross Moroni into Bungard can't tell if this is just a highlight before because we've made a sub or if this is actually going to be a genuine highlight if it is it's probably going to be Swansea's and I'm going to get irritated oh no it's free 2 it's free 2 don't do this yeah good play into Super Ross square it Beltran 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 and yeah, he's smacked over the bar could see that coming a mile off it's classic Beltran Maybe that's what I need to start doing. Maybe I need to stop being really positive in the way I do things. Maybe it's time that when we get ahead, just shut up shop. Just go to defensive. Every time you do it on Football Manager, you pay for it. It doesn't matter. We've got a 3-2 win. It should have been a lot more comfortable. Uh, I'm going to say that was a real check or high performance. You were good in the first half, but yeah, second half, and they all know it. They all know it. And I'm setting the tone straight away for the new signings. If you don't turn up in every game, hmm. That will have words, trouble. I expect high standards. At least United conceded as well. 
So what I want to do is I want to come back for the Champions League group draw so we can see it properly. I've got a funny feeling it falls either in between the Stoke and Huddersfield games or the Huddersfield and Watford games. What we'll do is we'll come back for any one of those, like that combination of three games, um, depending on when the Champions League draw is going to be made so we can all watch it together and see who we get this year. Remember this year, because we didn't win the league, there's a chance we're going to get an even harder group than the one we got last year, which is saying something. Um, but we are stronger this year. I know it didn't show in that one, but I think we just switched off. As long as I start setting the emphasis that you can't do that, uh, I think we will be absolutely fine. Thank you so much for watching the episode and the season premiere. I hope that you like my signings. Let me know in the comment section what you think of them. I'm quite excited. Please do like, share and subscribe. And until I see you in the next episode, we'll have that Champions League draw and hopefully a few more Premier League wins under our belt. Stay cool.